Hello, this is Breuer, and welcome back to another episode of our Let's Play for F1 Manager 2023. I almost said Football Manager. <laughs> F1 Manager 2023, as we continue our run here with Alfa Romeo. Probably the toughest start in this version of F1 Manager. Definitely got our work cut out for us to try to win the championship. But we got our first part in. Uh, first part developed here. We got the side pods that are going to hopefully boost up our engine cooling a lot to help us um, preserve our engine and save us some money in the long run. That's at least the goal. Whether it works out or not, we haven't actually finished a full season yet in my practice sessions leading up to this. So I don't actually know if this strategy will work, but we will all find out together. Um, I do need to get some parts manufactured for that. So let's go into our side pods here. Uh, we got a race in eight days. Could I rush this and get both out? We could not. All right, so we can do one. Or we can need to get two, but I'm probably going to go ahead and craft three just so I have an extra in the in the, my back pocket because I ran into the uh, issue, obviously, of... of I mean, You guys probably saw the screenshot, but I ran into the issue of uh, getting some crashes and having to do emergency craft parts in a previous test save. And it uh, did not go well. That's a very expensive way to go about it. I actually don't know if this is going to come out in time. So is it eight days for the the race itself or eight days for um, the beginning of the weekend? We're here. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. So it's eight days before the beginning of the weekend. I just don't know if that part would be done in time. I Honestly, we rushed the development. If I'm going to rush the development, I'm going to guarantee that the part comes out in time. And what, by that, I mean, um, uh, I'm going to have to rush the, the crafting of this as well. I, I can't. It defeats the whole point of rushing the development in the first place if I don't get this out real quick. So it's a little bit more expensive. It's not ideal. It's not what I was hoping for. But we're going to go for this just to make sure that this comes out. The first one comes out. The other two can come out a little bit slower. It's okay. But I want to get my first car with this on there right away. So we'll go ahead and rush this. In five days, we'll have a part. Again, not ideal. But if this does end up saving us from having to craft an engine at the end, spending a couple hundred thousand bucks early on to rush a few development and manufacturings is well worth it, in my opinion. All right. That looks good. The next car part development will be in eight days. That'll be after the race or right, right as the race is starting. Other than that, nothing else. I did kick off a couple more upgrades on some facilities things. Um, I think I also kicked off. Yeah, I kicked off another rank of the team hub just because it's going to help our staff develop more. Plus, it does increase our team attractiveness by a decent margin. Now, just out of curiosity, has it, because it's been a couple days since uh, the race, uh, is it at all possible? He's just never, I don't know if he'll be interested at all, to be honest. He's probably very happy with McLaren, and I wouldn't doubt. I don't blame him. He's the he's the number one driver for McLaren, isn't he? So I don't blame him for that. I doubt he'll want to join us, but you never know. Uh, let's go to the facility here. We're going to go ahead and continue the upgrades here. Lots of stuff happening right now. All right, Helipad, we are going to continue that. That also boosts our team attractiveness a bit. We'll go with that. Uh, hospitality room or area that is very expensive. What's the difference here? Oh, 10%. Oh, okay. Well, what is our team attractiveness right now? Do we have a way to see that? I don't think we have a way to see that. The board is delighted. Um... I don't know where we would see our team attractiveness. I can't even think of where to look. It'd be nice if it was like in here somewhere, but I don't see it. I may just have to go do the math myself, you know? <laughs> like, okay, obviously there's no team attractiveness in here, so I'm not worried about that. There are a couple in here. We're about to be at 25 there. Nothing else. Okay, so we're at 25. We are going to be at 10 there, so it's 35. There's another 10. 45. There's 20. 55, 65. Plus 7. 72. So we're at 72. So 10% would be um, 
plus five, I guess. We already have the five, right? So that'd be 77. So 10% would be almost eight. So this is almost worth 13 team attractiveness points. It's very expensive. But if I make our team attractive, we can get some really good staff. This is probably a dumb way to do this. But if we get good staff, that sets such a good foundation for developing the rest of our team around that good staff that, I don't know, I, it's different than I've done and a different what I, what I would have thought to have done. But we're going to go for it because I'm crazy this, this time around. All right. Sponsor obligation. We can increase his morale, but we lose the sponsor object obligation. Um, oh, man. So this is the one for March 27th, which is the one down here. And this is just a driver media appearance. So how much does that cost us? Oh, I didn't know we had more mem memorabilia room events. Oh, okay. That's cool. Um, I don't know how much. So it's 20. I'm going to do, I'm going to have to do some math because this is, this, this is, there's two drivers here, so I can't do that very quickly, but let's see. We got, um, 11, 320 divided by 20. So each appearance is worth 566,000 bucks. Oh, no, I'm sorry, dude. I am sorry. We can't, we can't lose 600,000 bucks, my friend. I mean, I like you and I'd like you to be happy, but we need, we need the 600,000 bucks. Sorry, buddy. You're going to low. I mean, morale is going to hurt us in the race itself, but this first season, the money's more important than the race. Although by placing well in races, we get money. So it's a catch 22, right? Both answers are right and wrong at the exact same time. All right. There's our boardroom. There's our chassis. Um, I mean, more race confidence, more team attractiveness. I just, I have to keep my job. If we don't keep our job, the whole, this, this whole thing is pointless. And so I'm hoping the race confidence is something that, can we see? No, it's not going to show. I wish there was a way to see what these actually do. You know, we're going to go for it. It's not super expensive and it does increase our race attractiveness as well. So which is something else we're going for. I mean, so does the memorabilia room, but that just does not look doesn't look as good honestly we might if we have some extra money later but for right now we're gonna go with that uh we did get that car part uh ready to go so we do have some more oh i forgot to put the development in that was that was my mistake i got so excited about getting my side pod developed that i forgot to put that in um we are gonna go ahead and uh craft a couple more of these not rushed we're gonna craft a couple normal and then we are going to craft a couple of what was it chassis yep and these are going to be when's the next race after this 14 days. If we rush these, in theory, we could get them both done in 14 days. If we don't rush them, we'll get one done. Okay, we'll just go get one done here and at least get some uh, cooling done. I think this is going to be okay. Oh, uh, we won't actually do three total, though. Cool. I like that. Uh, we will go back to design. I totally missed a couple days there. It's not the end of the world because I think we're ultimately going to be money capped but not quite what I meant to do. Um, so the next thing we're going to build is probably rear wing and suspension. Um, we do have CFD hours for this. I think CFD hours for the rear wing is actually a really good idea. And then we'll probably put CFD hours into the underfloor when that comes back around, which we should, it should come up in time for us to do that. Now we're going to lower the lifespan. Uh, primarily, I want to focus on the drag reduction of the Delta, the DRS, DRS Delta, I think. I don't care about the airflow sensitivity for sure. I want to push the DRS Delta as high as it can go. That's a pretty big boost. It's going to move us up to like seventh place overall. Do I want to tweak down some of these other numbers a little bit? I mean, I don't need the medium speed really at all. I mean, that's not where I'm going to get it from. Let's put it that way. It does move us up a couple, couple more spots, I think, didn't it? No, it actually didn't. I was looking at the wrong... Um, what's that increase it by? That did increase by a couple more percentage points, though. And then... Do I care about the drag reduction right now, though? Not really. If I lower this, it actually helps our cornering even better. 
I think it's really just mostly DRS Delta and then maybe focusing on the low speed and high speed corners. Try to get those boosted up a little bit. I think this is okay. It's going to lower our top speed even more. I get it. That's bad. But if our DRS is in a good spot, we'll make up some of that top speed through that. I think I'm mostly okay with this part. I could push these up even higher to uh, just boost them up some more. But I don't think that's really what we're looking for. I think I'm okay with this part. Still gets us a little bit here. Mostly DRS Delta, which I think is what we're going to be using this part for the most part anyway. Do I want to do intense at this level? No, I think we're going to keep going with normal. Right now we're at 43 days. Uh, this part takes three days to finish. Six days for both of them. If I can lower it by one, then we'll definitely get it for Miami. I don't think we could get it for Baku. We could get actually one for Baku if we did two more. Yeah. So let us get one, uh, uh, one of them for Baku and the other one for Miami. I mean, I could put more in here. Then get both for Baku, I suppose. I mean, that would potentially be ready for Baku. I just don't know. I don't know if it's worth... I think we have to put one in here just to guarantee if we're going to get both for Baku, which I think would be fine. All right, we'll go with that. Uh, again, normal approach. I think it's going to be fine. We're trying to save some money early on in the season. Later in the season, we can, if we have some extra money, we can put some intense ones in. And then the other thing we're going to do is the suspension. And the suspension is going to be primarily to help our brake cooling. Uh, I am not going to put points into the, the hours. So we don't care about drag reduction. We don't care about airflow front. We primarily want brake cooling. But I might back down, balance that with a little bit of downforce so that we don't just completely... Um, honestly, something like that where we lose just a teeny tiny bit of medium, of medium speed might be okay to gain a little bit in the other areas. I mean, it's not really much to, to, to write home about, but it still boosts our brake cooling up quite a bit. And it gets us a good foundation, then build up like actual performance parts on from there point forward. All right, we're going to do that. Uh, this is a 40 day. Uh, I think it's five days or eight days or something like that for suspension. Let me go look. I actually don't remember. I should write these down somewhere. Or they should have it on that on that menu somewhere where I could see it. Uh, oh, I can't craft it right now. All right, well, we're going to go. I don't remember. Mm. Let me see. Let me see if I can look it up. How long does suspension take to craft in F1 Manager 2023? I don't see anybody with any notes on that. All right, we'll just, I think it's eight. I think it's eight. I don't remember though. We'll, we'll, we'll go based off of eight. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And not the end of the world. Uh, so like I said, air flow front goes down, brake cooling goes up, drag reduction goes down, medium speed goes down, and then this one went up a little bit, right? Or did I leave, no, did I leave those the same? I think I did that. If I didn't, it's close enough to what I want to be anyway. I thought I had that one up. Or did I just do that? That's what I did. I did that. Okay. One tick of low speed just to make sure that's at least getting in the positive direction, but everything else just kind of where it's at. I think I'm okay with that. And again, we're going to pretend it's eight days. It's probably wrong, but Baku would be 42 days away. So if we got it in on day 33, yeah, we'll just put the last four engineers and hope that's good enough. And we're going to do normal again here. I mean, we, I know intense is better. Intense is definitely better, but normal is not miles behind let's put it that way and it's so much cheaper from a dollar per um experience gained point of view i mean normal is just by far the best but intense is just better intense is like a balance between rushed and and normal and what i mean by that is it's the same time as normal but it's almost like you're rushing everything behind the scenes so you basically get more experience sooner in the in the season but it costs a significant amount of money Whereas, uh, but again, normal is just going to be fine. We're going to, we're going to deal with normal money is going to be our biggest issue. So we'll go with that. Uh, let me go to the cars and I think I have, okay, not yet. We do have the side pod though, don't we? Yep. We'll put this on car number one, get him some nice cooling right away. Of course, if he crashes and loses that, I'm going to have to make an emergency park. So it's a little scary, 
but uh, we'll go with that. Uh, we do technically have a backup suspension here that's a tiny bit better. I mean, I'll put it on. It's whatever. It's not one I've made. It's just one that we start with for whatever reason. But no, that looks okay. Uh, we haven't crafted anything else yet. The next two things we're crafting are the chassis and the another couple of side pods. That's right. All right. Let me, let's get going to the race day. Which it is time for race prep now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put the qualifying thing back in here again. I'm hoping we can get one driver to qualify. That would be really, really nice. It's a huge loss though if we don't. We're not going to do the fastest lap, obviously. Qualifying position, both drivers hitting 14th or higher is not going to happen. But one driver hitting Q2 is plausible. So we'll see if that goes from there. Go with that. Let's do the race weekend. We're here in Jeddah, where the tension is boiling. All right, I'm going to go wait, do the practice, and I and probably the qualifying as well, and I'll bring you guys back for race day. All right, unfortunately, we missed qualifying by just a smidge again. That is going to cost us a good chunk of money. Um. As expected, Red Bull first and third. Although, actually, would have expected them first and second, to be fair. Uh, Aston Martin actually making a good good show of things. Uh, and then here we are. Uh, we technically... I'm oh, sorry, that's practice. I'm looking at the wrong thing. I was like, why does that make, not make sense? Actually, there's Red... That's even worse. <laughs> fourth place. Red is... We're stopping his fourth place. Followed by Aston Martin, Mercedes, Alpine. Uh, but yeah, here we are down here in um, 16th. Just a couple hundred sec second behind Williams. Really need to try and figure out how to push that up there. At some point, just not quite there yet. Um, yeah, this is what it is, I guess. Uh, but yeah, looking, we'll be all right. We'll get there. Uh, it did cost us a little bit of money, obviously, because I'm doing the guarantee for qualifying. I, I just feel like we can qualify 15th. I feel like we're just a hair away from it. So I feel like we we we're close. We should be able to get that money back if we can start getting that in there. But uh, oh well. Um, obviously, it's a single pit pit race, so. Trying to figure out what's the best strategy here. I mean, we do want to push a bit. Something like that. Uh, might be okay. We'll update that one and we'll just check these out kind of one by one. I mean, obviously, that would be way too much. We'd have to go something like that maybe here. I mean, we'd have to cool off a little bit from, from this strategy, but it actually looks like medium strategy is going to be better, which makes sense to me because softs are not a lot ahead of mediums on this particular track. So I do think this is going to be our best strategy for this. Um, for Zhao, what I might do is I might go with this strategy and just kind of flip his pit stuff around. Something like that. I put some at 115.50 and put you at same thing. Okay, so the timing's good. Timing looks about the same. Um, anything we want to change with car parts? We're about to be at the limit for our engine, where we're going to dip below its effectiveness. I think we we at least run one more race with it, um, and then we might swap to a different one and just use this one for practice. I don't know. I, I really need to think about that one pretty hard because a lot of the other teams are also going to have. De degraded engines for sure so honestly until we get our cooling parts on we may just stick with this engine once we get our max cooling parts on we can move to another engine and know that it'll hopefully last longer but this one's kind of already you know done what it's done right so all right we'll go with that uh full deploy and all that kind of jazz for the beginning of the race as normal i don't expect another 10th place finish in this one i would be happy with a 15th place finish from Bottas, honestly the drivers are lined up on the grid. It's almost time for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And it slides out, and away we go. I will click on the battle assist just to get our DRS last a little bit longer through this first bit. And let's, let's watch a little bit of this race too. Because why not? a very tight track uh width wise oh that's scary <laughs> 
the tires where everybody else running. A lot of softs, actually. We're the only ones on hards. Interesting that they went with that strategy. But I guess if we weren't pushing, we could have gone with that strategy too. But I just don't think there was enough difference between the softs and the, and the mediums to... And maybe I'm wrong, but it just didn't feel like there was enough of a difference to justify focusing it on the softs. One of the two DRS spots. Oh, I guess there's technically three. Never mind. I forgot about this little tiny one. Oh, there goes McLaren. No, come back here, McLaren. Hey, 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 watch your language. All right, there we go. I'll bring you guys back if anything exciting happens. Uh, otherwise, we'll be back at the end. All right, we're back. Nothing exciting really happened. We did have one accident that gave us a yellow uh, flag that we were able to kind of do a little bit of. Uh, we did one extra pit stop there because of that. But other than that, I mean, we did end up uh, both drivers above 15. So I'm I'm personally pretty happy with that, at least. So that's, I mean, it's not worth any points, but two above 15 is a good place to start the season at, which means we have a, as we continue to develop our car, uh, hopefully we can, uh, we're not too many points away from, too many spots away from uh, top 10, you know? But I think we're still seventh. Yeah, we're still seventh. We're the only, only one of these bottom four teams that has a point. Uh, we'll carry that as long as we can, obviously. Uh, we did have two pit stops still in the top 10, and that's pretty good. In fact, one of them under 2.5. That is awesome. We're actually just a hair away from Red Bull in the fr at all. Uh, and once we get above Red Bull, I think we'll just carry this DHL fastest pit stop to the end of the season. Fifth place at the moment overall with that. Feeling pretty good about most things. I think we've made a, I think I've made a couple mistakes, probably. But um I think for the most part, this, is, this has been a good run. I'm pretty happy with things, I think, for where they're at. Uh, both engines are below the threshold. I think we got to keep them going for now again until we at least get the cooling in place. Um, yep. Speaking of cooling in place, when are those coming up? Uh, it's not there. It's there. Uh, we've got five days and seven days. So we will have the second side pod before Grand Prix, the Austral Australian Grand Prix. We'll have one of the chassis before the Australian Grand Prix. That might be good enough to swap the engines around. I'm not sure. I'll have to think about it. We might at least swap the engine for Bottas and then hold on to Zhao's swap until he gets um, his chassis as well. Something like that. Scouting is completed. He's got high morale. That's part of the reason why he doesn't want to leave his, his team, right? I assume... Oh, he's open to negotiations. Oh, it's got a, he's got a high buyout fee, but I would love to get this guy in our team. Oh, he's got a good, pretty high buyout fee. I would love to get him in here. His development rate is high. The sooner we get in, the sooner we develop the way we want it to be. His aggression's average, which I've had low aggression guys and I've had high aggression guys. I haven't had average aggression guys, but I do know because I was playing around with Red Bull a little bit. I do know that Verstappen is average aggression as well. So we obviously know he's a great driver. Not to say that Piastri's for Verstappen, but he could be someday. You never know. Um, uh, and I, I, that's even in real life. I think he. I mean, you never know what these guys can do. Um, his smoothness is really bad. We would have to work on the smoothness right away. Um, his control is pretty good, though. I mean, he's not going to have quite as, you know, too many accidents, I don't think. Can we compare him against... No, we can't compare him against... Uh, against... Um, Theo. Ah, Theo control 72. It's actually not bad. But, I mean, 83 is just so much better. What about Theo's smoothness? The smoothness is pretty bad as well. But his aggression being high, just... I mean, I think having one high aggression driver is okay. If that ends, that's how it ends up, but... It just seems like they have so many accidents. So I don't think we want that until we can have the money to pay for their accidents. You know what I mean? Um, I think we go... I mean, I think we go for him. We don't have a lot of money. 
But I think we go for him. I think if we get Piastri in here, that would be awesome. I mean, we want him as many seasons as we can get him in for. Uh, he's currently making 1481. I mean, we're going to have to pay him more, obviously. How much is Zhao making? Sorry. I should know these things. 2-5. Okay, we got, we got some cushion here with Piastri to get him under Zhao as far as salary. Um... Pump you up a decent chunk. We come up you up to 175. We will give you a 10% sign on bonus, I think. And shoot, we'll give you a racing bonus. If you get into points, yeah, I'll totally give you 50,000 bucks. Absolutely. It costs two and a half mil. But I want I want these youngsters in soon, just so I can start developing them the way I want to develop them. All right, let's go for it. Oh, he'll take it. I could have gone down. <laughs> oh, no. I could have dropped a lot of that. That's all right. I, I think I'm still okay with this. We're still saving 750000 bucks over the year for him, which pays for a big chunk of that that contract breakage. So, no, I think I think this is still well worth it. I'm happy with this. Piastri, welcome to Alfa Romeo. Nice. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with this pickup really um the development rate obviously uh we did talk about we want to get his smoothness up as soon as possible smoothness and probably any of the pacing stats honestly so cornering breaking and smoothness uh reactions yeah could be useful yeah i think pace long runs is probably what we're looking for Pace long runs. Get that smoothness up as soon as possible. Good stuff. Okay, because of that pickup. Now, I don't think we can afford it just yet, but we want to get the race simulator up and running. We could technically afford it. Probably not a smart idea because I think we have parts that we want to craft soon. Mm, nothing before the next race. And the next race... Will also coincide with the end of the month, which will get a bit, bit of a chunk of money there too. Maybe we can afford this. You know what? We got the we got a driver that we want to get developed ASAP. Let's go for it. This is probably ridiculously crazy, but I'm gonna go for it. Oh, we got him! I love it! I love it! I love it! That's awesome, Piastri! Welcome. Got him for five years too. All right, uh, do we have another upgrade on the helipad? We do, we can't afford it, obviously, but we'll circle back to that at some point. Fine with that. I, I'm, I'm wondering if all of these team attractiveness points that we put in made a difference. I mean, obviously a couple of them still haven't finished crafting, uh, but those will helpfully help with some of the other staff members that we want to get. Oh, speaking of staff members, totally forgot to scout some more staff members. Sporting director, I think, is going to be the next one we want to grab. Um, I think Marco Perone here would be a decent one for us to pick up. He's young and he's got a pretty good stats. A lot of these guys are open to negotiation though. I mean, we could just go poach one other McLaren, I suppose. No, let's go for him. Let's go. Let's do a, let's do a standard. Yeah, let's do a standard scaling for you. And then we'll do a standard scaling for Marco. We'll compare the two of those. They're both young. Um, Pretty good stats. So Grand Deep has higher stats overall, but if his stats in um, the specific one that I want, which is what? Uh, aptitude, right? Uh, if that's not as higher than Marco's, then we may go with Marco. Polo. Sorry, couldn't help myself. Um, cool, we'll go with that. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, side pods are coming in. We got three of them now. So we couldn't go ahead and put the side pod on you. Wait, I thought we said we had three of them. Maybe I'm, oh, maybe it's just because it's counting the ones that are in production right now. That's fine. We got one day on the side pod. So team hub. All right, go ahead and get the other side pod put on you. Up your uh, engine cooling a lot. All right, so overall engine cooling. 
55%. We're in fifth place for engine cooling right now. And that's without putting the uh, chassis on, which we do have one we can put on car number one now. So car number one is first place on engine cooling. We're ahead of Red Bull on engine cooling. Yay, we're winning. I mean, <laughs> it's not helping us on the track, but it's going to help us save our engine. So that's the goal there. At least in theory. I don't know if it's actually going to work that way. I'm hoping that's how the cooling works. Don't actually know. All right. Finish position streak. We just need to keep this going. If we can keep this going for a couple more, that's a nice chunk of reward. Uh, I mean, are we going to put... The... <laughs> you know what? We're going to go for it. I, I Apparently, I don't learn. Someday, we're going to get top 15 on this. I suppose I could drop this down a little bit. It does not cost as much, but just... No, we're going to go for it. Someday we're going to get this. It's going to be worth it. <laughs> By the time we get it, we'll have paid a million bucks in losses. And so the first one we'd get, we'll have just paid for all of our losses. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. I'm determined that we can get 15th and above. I just somehow. All right. We'll just say one person finishing top 15. Just a couple hundred thousand. But that actually would be really nice. 300,000 bucks right there. Yes, please. And then these two are both ones that I think we can get potentially. I mean, if we just get somebody in top 15, that's a couple hundred thousand bucks there too. Come on. About 150,000 bucks. Let's go. All right. Let's go to the race weekend. It's wonderful to be back. Oh, I'm happy that we got Piastri. I think that it's going to be good. I think it's going to be better for us long-term than Theo because Theo... Just with that high aggression is prone to accidents, as we know from last year's. Uh, all right, let me go do the practice. I will be right back. All right, we're back. I'm going to bring you guys along for our qualifying just because it's so critical to us getting some money. Uh, might as well show you guys what we're doing. Um, we did do pretty good. We got both people up to 100% in practice. Uh, both of them are currently sitting at high for the driver confidence going into this. Uh, we're obviously going to go with the compounds there, but we are going to swap in some new engines and try to give us a fighting chance here of doing well. Oh, wrong button. Sorry. Uh, let's go with this new engine. Okay. Uh, the rest of the parts should be okay because they're still above their their limit. All right, we'll go with one flying lap to begin with, and we'll see if this. If we, we just gotta get somebody, one person in Q two. That's all I care about. Probably bought us, but you never know. Come on, guys. Do good here. A little bit of traffic ahead of them as they're coming through here, unfortunately. There goes Bottas for his first flying lap. No idea. <laughs> no idea. I mean, we're two seconds behind for stopping, so we're obviously pretty slow. All right, we're just going to reconfigure for the two flying laps. Send them back out. Come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There he goes. I mean, better than their first one. I think a little bit, maybe. There we go. That's what we need to see. That first section, second section, good. The third section, eh, okay. But I think that was a better lap overall, maybe. Yeah, we're only one and a half seconds behind it for Shepin now. That's pretty good. I'll take that. I mean, there's still a lot of people who haven't raced yet. And they're probably going to be tuning in some things and their first run's not going to be their best, things like that. But, okay, we're going to have to swap out the tires now. That's the only change we're going to make and hope that that is enough. Uh, 
Come on, fresh tires. All right, let's let's last uh, last stint for us. Come on, Bottas, you're our only hope. Mm, not good on that first section. Or at least not better, I should say. Uh, Piastri got a better second section. His best second section. All right, come on. This first section of this second... Ah, uh, it's not better. Uh, Piastri did a little bit better, though. Uh, I think Piastri improved. Neither of them enough. Look at how close we are. We're going to miss it again by such a microscopic margin. It is, it's like it's... It's like it's intentionally tuned against this. Because here's the deal. I told you guys, I did some practice runs, a couple couple practice runs through the first, I think, four races uh, twice, I think. Um, and full disclosure, I reached top 15 qualifying with Bottas every single race. Uh, every single one of those four races. So eight total races, four of them, the same ones, same four ones twice, to be fair. Uh, but the ones we're doing right now, I, I hit uh, top 15 both times, all four races both times. So I don't know why suddenly we can't get past 16. It's like, it's the, it's a bug against us right now. It's so annoying. Uh, oh, they actually picked up. Oh, good for them. We just did a driver swap. Good for them, man. It's not, even, I don't care about being down to 16th in general, other than the fact that we are losing so much money. Because I keep going for those guarantees. Because I think we're going to get there. I think we'll get top 15 eventually. And be able to stay in the top 15. It's just... Oh, it's so rough. I mean, we have done nothing to improve the performance of our cars, to be fair. But it's also so early in the season that not a lot of people have had a chance to do much to do much with their cars. So I just assumed that with the brand new engine, things like that, we might, we might have a fighting chance. But that is not the case, unfortunately. All right. Do we stick with this engine? And use the other engine for practice. I mean, the other option is to save this engine for um, when we do get some performance, some better performing parts to give us, uh, you know, kind of a better engine. Then I think I think we swap engines back. I think it was okay to swap it for the qualifying because qualifying just takes basically nothing off your engine. Uh, but I think we go back to this engine for now because we're just we're not in a position to really attack for you know a good good spot at the end of the race not yet we will be if we get a few more development parts but for right now i think that is the right move all right let's go ahead and check out our strategies i mean we could uh actually let me go look at the the race report so it's a 21 second pit time that's not terrible um but if we go look at uh what am i looking for compounds i mean it's not much i mean the difference between soft and medium is pretty small the difference between medium and hard it looks like it's a little bit bigger of a spread it's 3.4 versus uh 4.5 it five almost 4.6 so or 0.34 versus point you know what i mean <laughs> um yeah i could see an argument for pushing mediums instead of hards if we can push them harder or mediums versus softs, I should say, if we can, like, really push them harder. So, let me just see what we can do here. I mean, the most we could do with that would be, like, something like that. Whereas, the most we can do with this would be... We could probably just about get away. Just about. We could definitely get away with a harder push with the mediums. Something like that. Um... Difference here is eight seconds to going with the mediums over the softs, just because we can push them harder. Uh, what about the triple strategy or triple pit strategy? I mean, something like that, but I'd like to run the mediums for most of this, I think. All right, so which one of these looks better? 119. 15 second difference it gives us a lot of flexibility 15 second difference um and the pit stop's only gonna be 21 seconds could we make up that five seconds 
by just pushing these harder. I don't know. Maybe. These are bought. These are like tight windows, though. I think we go with the three pit. Uh, maybe we go. Maybe it's crazy. Maybe it's a dumb idea. But I think we go with the three pit. Uh, for Piastri, I'm going to actually swap your medium and your soft here. Let's see about you ending on a high note, maybe. Guess that's one good thing about not um, not making further qualifyings is that we can uh, uh sorry we can um, we'll have better softs for the race time again not that it really matters that much because again our, I'm not expecting us to be able to compete for spots but we'll see what happens. on the battle assist just we're in crowds we want to be able to use them smartly and then let's go we'll watch another run through with Bottas here just because why not you can use overtake Drop it. <laughs> Feels so fast. All right, well, uh, I will go away and run this race. I don't expect anything exciting because we still don't have any actual performance parts on our cars yet. That will be coming in the coming weeks and months, but uh, we'll be back at the end of this. All right, not a very good race, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, it is what it is, but uh, it did start raining at the very, very end, and I don't know that we managed the hit stop for that quite right because um, we, we had to pit just before the rain started. I was hoping the rain wouldn't get bad enough that it wouldn't matter, but it did. So we did have to throw in an extra pit stop, which just slowed us down. I think we could have gotten 15th, maybe. Of course, our old driver is now 15th with McLaren. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, weirdly, I think he's actually a better driver for them than Pi Piastri was. Because I don't. I think Piastri was still way down here at the bottom when he was driving for McLaren. But that's okay. The whole point of Piastri, the reason we have him, is to have a driver that we can develop the way we want to. So I'm okay with him not performing especially well. We only need one driver to perform well, and uh, I think Bottas would have been up there if I had managed the the wet pit stop better. Um, that's all that. We only had one pit stop in the top 10. Wow. And everybody had some really fast pit stops, but that's okay. I think we'll be able to get this still. Uh, we are... Actually, McLaren skipped us there for the fastest pit stop. I think it's going to be okay in the long run, because I think we'll be able to... Uh, to get some more speed into stuff. And we're still losing money. I, just, I should stop going for that guarantee for the qualifying position streak. But I just feel like we could get it. We're so close. I'm being stubborn. Just for the record, I'm being very stubborn about it. I know. At this point, we have to get it to make up all the money that we just lost. So weirdly, it's like gambling, right? It, it's exactly gambling. Because I'm like, well, if I gamble one more time and we get it, it will make up all the money that we lost. But if I then we keep losing and then 
it's just it, it's it's bad guys it's bad all right so board confidence the driver update oh piastri picking up some controls some defending and some accuracy i wonder why he's picking up those stats when i have him i'll double check to make sure i do have him focus on the right things but i mean i'm okay with him picking up some control that's that's fine by me uh let's see here yeah i got him on pace I wonder if that's just carry over from before or if it's still random but these are the ones you're going to get the most. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Um, I haven't played it long enough to know how the development actually truly works. Medium confidence. They're actually disappointed with the last two races. Delighted with the first one. Overall satisfied though. So board confidence seems okay. If we could start getting some, some reasonably good finishes though. I think we'll be alright. So we got three side pods now in the warehouse. All of our parts are passing still. There is our standard for... Round deep here, as well as prone. Prone's at 90 aptitude, 81 processes. For deep is 86 aptitude, 90 process. Oh, that's a tough one. Those are both good. Hmm. Those are both really good. I mean, the... the The aptitude is what I want the most, right? So. But I can't, I mean, he's, he's in a good place. 90 processes is not bad. That will helps us. That means we can do more training sessions. I mean, again, our ceiling is still very tight. It's tighter than the other guys. I mean, his process is 91. No, his process is better. He's just better for the two stats that I care about the most. I don't care about training. I don't care about leadership that much. I think this is just a better a better guy for what we want. Um, I honestly don't know what contract to give him. I'm going to go for it without doing the 30-day because I'm hoping that we can kind of maybe use this guy as a good jumping-off point. This guy makes 418. If I, could pay the, if I can get the other guy for like 750 or less... I would probably be pretty happy with that. So let's jump in here to Mark Perone. Let's propose a contract. We'll go with five seasons. Immediate. Uh, and we'll go with... Start with like 600. I, I'd be willing to pay some extra for him. Some sign-on bonus. We'll give him a 10% sign-on bonus. He's like, okay with everything except the salary. All right, all right. We'll go up to... 700? Sure. I'm going to give you a little bit extra money there, too. I mean, you're already happy, happy with the sign-on bonus, but maybe even happier. Sign okay, there we go. 700, I think that's fair. I mean, it's a couple hundred thousand dollars more than the guy we've got, but he's got the stats where we want them, and I think this is exactly what we want, so... Let's go ahead and grab him. It's going to help our pit crew get even further along. I mean, if this guy helps us get to that 12 million, then he's definitely worth whatever money we're spending on him right now. Very happy with that pickup. Uh, we do want to go straight into development and have him continue to work on capping those out, hopefully to 100 uh, pretty soon. All right. We're, made some, we're making some moves, guys. I'm, I'm feeling good about things. Uh, in fact, with our new guy, let's go ahead and knock out our training sessions real quick, and then we will call it an episode. So let's just plug this into pit stop time just so I can get a bunch of these flipped over already. Uh, and we want to look at cum cumulative. This will put us weary. That's okay. We're not going to do all that anyway. So we'll go rest. Okay, we're in a good spot there. Let's move these over to gym training now, because gym training does take up more fatigue. Use so we definitely want to uh, plug these in before I assume that we can add more after this list of them. All right, that's right on the edge of tired. I don't think we can add another one. I will try. Cannot. I didn't think so, but worth trying. All right. That's pretty good, though. That's another two tenths of a second almost shaved off 
of our that's a lot that is a lot we're under we're under 2.3 seconds now uh if this all goes through right i mean the mistakes percentage is still relatively high we definitely need to work on that at some point but this is going to be fine uh we couldn't like sneak in a pit stop drill could we nah all right just figured it was worth it once we get the pit stops down to i don't know maybe maybe sub two seconds or maybe we just start winning those maybe we start working on the the overall fatigue or the uh, overall uh mistake stuff cool i am very happy with how that looks confirm those changes and yeah we're gonna go ahead and put a cut in there when we come back we will be coming up for our first sprint weekend with baku here and uh that's the big one that's the one that uh when i did my i'm calling it a practice run I was recording sessions. It just ended up very badly and it turned into a practice run. But that's where uh, we lost four chassis in my last attempt at this series. So hopefully we do better in this one. We'll find out. But I do appreciate you guys watching. May God bless you. And I hope you join me again next time. Thank you and goodbye. I wanted to give a special shout out to the following channel members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.